Uh, I think what's important uh, as we see today, trade-based money laundering has become a major topic across the world. You know, why has it become a major topic? I, I mean, if you look at it, you don't need to be a rocket scientist to understand that. See, the sheer volume of trade is increasing across the world. Uh, parties involved, it's not simple, one or two parties, it could be much more, num multiple number of parties. Third is, we are always fighting this battle between simplification of process versus compliance asking you to do something, which is, uh, you know, always a bit of a contradiction in itself. So we have to keep balancing that. I think balancing is not always easy. Uh, <coughs> and uh, as a result, this is becoming a, a bigger and bigger risk because the other areas of banking, etc., are getting better controls. You know, so uh, this is an area where bank has limited control because it has to work with a lot of other parties. You know, the counterparties themselves. You know, and their reputation. So you can do certain checks, or you might not be able to do a complete check, or might sometimes you might not be able to discover something in the first instance at all. So that's why it's becoming more and more difficult for you know, banks alone to keep control of this particular sector. So I think this, what needs to be done is much more holistic and needs to go beyond just the banks. It has to be, even the counterparties have to be trained equally well. So <coughs> the other major area which we are not covering at all is the cash-based transaction. I think Mr. Nepal mentioned about cash economies. I think where so much of transaction is taking place in cash where we just don't have any control and we don't even know what's happening in that. So even if I leave that aside, even the one which is sort of proceeding through the various channels, there itself we have so much of challenges yet still. So again I thought of what could be the Indian sort of, the way I looked at the way Indian banks have evolved over the last 10-15 years, what could be one of the major issues with that? I think one issue that I came back is that I think most of the banks have now got a silo based approach where each silo is working independent of each other and the, sometimes the uh, KPIs are different from each other. So you look at compliance as a uh, something which is sort of maybe impeding you or so you might have to like to just get it through with a, a tick box attitude, have a checklist, tick it and get, let it get through, let the transaction go through. So my customer says there is a delay, I must do something about it and get things done. This uh, also, there is a lot of, sometimes I see there is there's a lack of application of mind, you know, because ultimately it is the mind which has to be applied. Not everything is just the data or what you, what the system is telling you. So somewhere the application of mind is important. So if you are in in that frame of mind, then you don't apply your mind. I think that's where things have to change. So ultimately, what should change? I feel is holistic approach. AML should not be considered as an imposition, it is part of your integrated enterprise risk management system and everybody in the company, whether he is part of compliance risk or not, should have that feeling in the, in the bank or any other organization. And second is training, because we lose too many people in the front line continuously. So training both in the bank, uh, people who are dealing with these transactions is going to be important, as well as people who are dealing from on behalf of the counterparties is going to be important. And finally, I have a thought which I don't know, I, I mean, uh, it is a thought that even people who are sort of a general insurer who is issu issuing a marine insurance policy, is there enough due diligence being done at their point of time? That could sort of add as an additional check to what the bankers are doing and could sort of balance each other. Thanks.